Amid Bonnie Monroe from MissFabulous.com reporting exclusively for Z Trends. And today we're on East 37th Street where we're going to be visiting Byron Lars in his studio. It has been, of course, a long time since I've seen you. Yes, it has. Uh, since interning with you. You were my dream position interning, actually. I, I was like going like, okay, who do I want to intern with? And you had such remarkable collections back then and such amazing technical detail that I said, now that's somebody I want to learn from. And oh, so thank I, you so much. I was when when I got the word yes, I could intern with you. I was so excited, and it was probably one of the best experiences of my life, and definitely contributed to my career. Oh well, thank you for that's very nice to hear. I mean, I, it's, you're still a big influence. Never on me. known that until just now. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Now, where did you start off? I know that you were grew up in Oakland, correct? Um, I actually grew up in El Cerrito. El Cerrito? Uh, okay. California. I had a friend there that like taught me how to sew. Wanted to make a pair of pants. I actually wanted her to make them for me, but she wouldn't. And she's like, I'll show you how to sew, but I will not sew for you. And I'm like, okay. And that kind of started it all. Um, I made the pants. All the kids in school liked them. Then I started making prom dresses for the kids. And then I was like, okay, I want to do this professionally. I loved the idea of um, having at that time the power to like make something and people to actually like just you know use it. And where did you go to fashion school? Um, I started off at Brooks in Long Beach and then I transferred into FIT here in New York. Yeah so I got like many jobs uninteresting and uninteresting companies as an assistant and since my um, strength was in pattern making that's generally the type of assistant job that I got. And then I kind of uh, started this small collection of my own now that was 1991, correct? Mm -hmm. 1991. Yeah. Oh God. Three thousand years ago. <laughs> you're making me feel too old. In any old case, when you no. say that. <laughs> in any case, um, we were in a recession then too. I remember that was why I had the confidence to actually make a small collection because I thought, how popular could it get? It's a recession. I mean, maybe if anybody likes it, you know, you get a small order that you can manage and handle. And you can cut it and ship it yourself. Now, if I, if I remember, you did like seven pieces and like actually took them around to all the stores? I did. I made seven pieces. It's like baseball jacket inspired dresses and skirts and tops and all that kind of thing. I put them in a garment bag, slung them on my back and went door to door, beating on, you know, the, the doors of stores that would see me. And um, it was actually surprising how many people did see me. Um, but um, Henry Bendel's at that time had open calls for designers to come in and show their collections. But I think I called actually on a time that wasn't during that period and they saw me anyway and wrote my first order. And I was like, wow, this is great. Oh no, how am I going to ship this? Yeah. <laughs> but it was all fine. I started taking the same collection around to magazines to see if we could get any press, to get to women's wear. And they wrote an article about it. And then it just kind of went. Yeah, just like, like, it was almost like a mushroom cloud. It was the kind of thing that, like, my business outgrew me overnight. It outgrew my experience. You know, I was just a guy, I made a few samples at home, and then all of a sudden, you know, I'm doing fashion shows at Fashion Week, and I'm duking it out for models with Calvin Klein. That was all wrong. It shouldn't happen that way, you know? Well, but, but I have to say... Maybe it was a little bit too fast? It was way too fast. But but I have to say that you had some of the most inspiring shows during that whole period and it, it was it was it was evident why you were getting the attention. Oh well so. you know that's that's kind and I'm I'm really grateful for the experience of that, but I just remember um it was all really overwhelming to have, you know, it just happened so fast that and I understand the dynamic of that. Fashion, we need something new all yep. the time. And even though it's just like a bud and it hasn't like blossomed yet, it's just like you're so excited about it blossoming that like, you know, sometimes you can, you know, clip it and put it in the vase before it's mature. So I took a step back and thought, you know, what is it about this job that you really love? Because even though the shows were great and everything, it wasn't that. I understand. And it wasn't, it wasn't all the accolades and like all the parties and all that, you know. In fact, I didn't like any of that much at all. 
you know, I could do my job and everything, but it's like, that wasn't really what, what drove, you know, my passion for this. I really liked, you know, making clothes. I liked draping things. I liked, you know, searching for fabrics. I liked, you know, if I got, had a great collar on a dress form, that could make my whole day. I mean, it was really that simple. So I really wanted to get back to something that was that basic about this. After that initial big period, you went through a lot of different transitions. Mm -hmm. um, probably your most recognizable contribution during that period, which people really recognize you by, were your limited edition Barbies. Oh yeah, yeah there's that. I, yeah. I still have friends that have oh. all of their your limited edition Barbies. Oh, well, that's nice to hear. So, um, so, but I think you got back into the mainstream as far as public consciousness, probably when Michelle Obama wore your dress. Uh, that would have been a year ago, yes? Yeah, that was a year ago. She, um, she wore our dress to um, a Paul McCartney concert and yeah, and that was really exciting. For, Your for new me. company is called Beauty Mark. Mm -hmm. And where did you, what inspired you with that name? I don't know. You know, it was pretty much as simple as I just like it to be beautiful clothes. I like to make my mark at something, you know? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a great simple. catchy name, yes, yes. The only problem with it is that sometimes, um, you know, when people hear it, they think that we're in the beauty industry. And in cosmetics. Yeah. Right. So we get a lot of, you know, solicitation in that arena. <laughs> it's like, um, no, we don't need any hair dryers anytime real soon, but thanks. Okay, so your fall 2011 collection was inspired by Native Americans. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with that as your inspiration, and how did that influence your fabric choices, where you went with the line, etc.? Well, it kind of was an evolution from the previous spring collection, which was like, kind of like tribalized Americana, um, but more influence like from like, you know, Northern Africa, actually the whole of Africa. And then it just felt right, that whole, um, just tribal element integrated with like American classics. So I took a trip to the Native American Museum downtown and you just can't help being inspired there. It's just so many beautiful, beautiful things like um, porcupine quill embroideries, vegetable dyes. So that really informed a lot of the color choices and fabric choices like, you know, textures that like really feel like they're from the earth and construction that feels like maybe something that like just grew organically into something <laughs> like a sheath dress that had this peplum that kind of like started off as part of the hem and like went in to a side peplum and kind of like disappeared again into the back of the skirt and just felt like really organic. How did you come up with the makeup and the hair and the different little stylistic touches that you put into it. Well, that's the one part, and you know, in a presentation or a show, you gotta like have the fantasy in there because, you know, I make them real clothes for real women who have busy lives and everything, but in a show, a presentation, you really want, at least I need, you know, the fantasy of it all. And that's where the accessories came in, you know, um, buffalo, pillbox hat with horns and you know wild wildebeest muffs and things like that the tribal stripe like on the face just you know it just added like a touch of fantasy and also I think it just kind of almost enhances the classic nature of the clothes yes you know when you see like a really good suit with a buffalo pillbox hat it almost punctuates the, like the sensibility of the suit you know yes at yes, least that's definitely. the idea maybe it doesn't at all but no it did that's Every, what i'm going everything for. worked beautifully and, we, and, you. and and you're the king of presentations as far as i'm oh, concerned and it was a gorgeous you. presentation thank well it's been somehow. great seeing you again it's great seeing you thank too thank you for taking the time to be with us thank you so much for taking the time to come down and see me and i look forward to seeing you in september awesome great all Thanks. right thank you